Hi everybody, my name is Jason, uh, tech support manager here at Panologic, and I wanted to go over a uh, pooled desktop collection today with a non-persistent disk. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. What's a DVM collection? This is what we uh, group our virtual machines into so we know how to control their authentication behavior. Uh, through the panel controller, we use these collections to manage uh, the authentication behavior and the end user experience. Uh, and there are two main types of DVM collections. Uh, we've got the user-based collections and the device-based collections. You may also hear us refer to device-based collections as kiosks or kiosk mode. We go into more detail about the various types and uses of these DVM collections uh, in another video. For now, we're going to focus on these pooled desktops. So you may ask yourself, what's a pooled desktop collection? A pooled collection is quite literally a uh, pooled set of virtual machines that you're using. These are first-come, first-served DVMs or round-robin uh, type of delivery. Pooled collections are very popular environments where you need a ready-made virtual machine uh, available or accessible to anyone that can log in quickly. Uh, you're not going to necessarily retain user-specific settings. Uh, you may see this used in university labs, uh, library kiosks, test environments. Basically, this is not your standard uh, user-based collection. It's not like when you're at the office, you have your own virtual machine, your own settings and preferences. What's a non-persistent disk? A uh, non-persistent disk is an independent, uh, non-persistent storage configuration, and it prevents users from making any permanent changes to that virtual machine. The basic behavior for a non-persistent disk is that any changes made by end users is revoked once the DVM is rebooted. Uh, they will be or can be applied temporarily while the user is logged in and using the virtual machine. But once that virtual machine is rebooted, any changes are reset back to ground zero. Today we're going to show you this feature as it's configured within a VMware environment. In a pooled desktop environment, if a student were to download a virus, once that virtual machine is rebooted or reset, that virus is gone. One of the most common scenarios for using these pooled collections with non-persistent disks is in a testing environment, schools, universities. This way, the university can deliver a test and ensure that the student logs in, takes a fresh, clean example of this test, and cannot leave any tips, notes, or anything like that behind for anybody else that may log in after them. The first step to creating these, let's go into our panel controller and create the actual pooled virtual machine collection. For pooled desktop collections, you can use any Windows machine that you're normally going to use in any other collection. It doesn't really have any specific bearing on the operating system. So we can use XP, of course, Win7 32-bit, Win7 64-bit. If you have any questions on specifics surrounding the different types of collections, we do have information on our online help. And we also have another video here posted by uh, Eddie Gillis. Setting up a pooled desktop collection is fairly straightforward. We need to start by going into our setup tab and making sure that the directory configuration and the virtualization configuration are set and ready to go. Once that's confirmed, we can go to the DVM Collections tab and click the Add button. First, we want to go to the More and choose Pooled Desktops. That's the type of collection that we're creating here. We can call it whatever we want. This is just a reference for you to use when you're looking up your uh, collections here. Then click Next. On our Access tab, we can tell the panel controller which user or group of users to allow access to the virtual machines in this specific collection. For now, I'm just going to use all of my domain users. And then click Next. While we're not using it now, the Deployment section allows you to use automatic deployment uh, deploying from a template for future uh, configurations. We do have more information about this on our online help at help.panelogic.com. Go ahead and click Next. The DVMs tab is very important. This is where we tell Panel Controller which virtual machines we're actually adding to this collection or group of computers. Go ahead and click the Add button. I've got a few that are already made here, so I'll just be using those for now. Once you've confirmed that you've got the virtual machines that you want to use, go ahead and click the Add DVM Collection button. 
Panel Controller is now creating this group of virtual machines for you to use. You'll be able to see a uh, sum a total here of four. You can see if any of them are currently in use. And you can get more information about it on the DVMs tab. So you can see here I've got my uh, my Panel Direct version information uh, and I've got my uh, uh, template here with a user logged in already. But that's it, it's straightforward. Uh, that's all you need to do to create a pooled desktop collection. It's important to notice that when you make a non-persistent disk active for a specific virtual machine, any future changes to that virtual machine will not be saved. You'll need to edit the virtual machine and change the non-persistent disk back to persistent in order to retain any changes such as software updates uh, or patches. We do have an online guide on our online help, which is help.panelogic.com, which outlines our usage of psshutdown.exe. We utilize this tool to make sure that virtual machines in a pool desktop collection with non-persistent disks do get rebooted at a set amount of time after the user logs out. You can download PS Shutdown from Windows Sys Internals or search the web for it. We do have a link on our online help, which is help.panelogic.com. Once you've downloaded the pstools.zip, go ahead and extract it to the virtual machine. You want to make sure you put it in an easily referenceable location, such as C colon backslash pstools. You'll see why in a moment. pstools.zip does come with a lot of files, but we're only concerned with psshutdown.exe. Panologic has four script types that come with software. You can see them under C, Program Files, Panologic, PanoDirect, Scripts. We have the ability to create scripted commands upon session connection, session disconnection, session login, and session logout. For this situation, with non-persistent disks, we want to make sure that we edit the session logout.cmd. What we're going to be telling PanoDirect to do is to reboot the virtual machine using PS Shutdown with a set amount of time after the user has logged out of that session. Once you open session logout.cmd within Notepad, we want to make sure that we add the line backslash ps shutdown.exe dash k dash f dash t2. You can see an example of this right here. Obviously, if your location for the file is different, you want to make sure that the folder is properly referenced. Once we have the session logout.cmd file edited and saved, we can move on to actually creating the non-persistent disk. To create a non-persistent disk for a pooled collection, we want to go ahead and open up your vSphere client. It's important to notice that this change can only be made while the virtual machine is turned off. Once you're connected to your vSphere client console, go ahead and locate your virtual machine that you want to change. Typically speaking, we're going to be looking at what will eventually become our template. Once you find the virtual machine, ensure that it's powered off. If it's not yet powered off, please do so with a graceful shutdown. Once the virtual machine is powered off, right click on that virtual machine and go to Edit Settings. You'll see several devices in this window, but we're only concerned with hard disk. Highlight the hard disk and you'll see a mode section on the right hand side. Check the box to make this independent and then select non-persistent. Once you click OK, the non-persistent change has been completed. You'll see the task update below. Typically speaking, if you have several virtual machines, you want to edit one single template and update software on that once any changes are needed. You can then redeploy several virtual machines from that one template much quicker than manually editing all of your virtual machines. All right, so let's take a look at what the end user sees in the non-persistent pooled collection virtual machine. I've got one uh, set up here that I uh, recently cloned from, uh, from my template this morning. So we'll go ahead and log into that and make a couple changes. Now that we're logged in here, you can see that this is just a plain vanilla uh, installation. A couple applications I have here that were already on the template, but we're going to make uh, some of our own changes. First, we'll uh, we'll install Google Chrome. So we'll go up here and uh, take care of that. And uh, while that's downloading, uh, we're going to create a text document. Let's pretend that the uh, students use this uh, virtual machine to, to take tests 
and would leave a couple fake answers in there. Just basically any note or message that would be left behind. Alright, so that's saved. And we'll make one more change uh, in Internet Explorer. Uh, what we're going to do is just change the home page. I had it by default to a blank page. But in here we're going to make it a, uh, a home page of www.yahoo.com. I'll close this out here and just uh, reopen it make sure everything has been saved appropriately yep looks like it has been alright so we've got a, a few changes here we've got a uh, Google Chrome installed you can see the icons there on the desktop uh, we've got the home page for Internet Explorer changed to uh, yahoo.com and we've got some uh, answers left behind uh, from a previous student. So what we're going to do now is log out uh, as if I'm done using this virtual machine for now and we'll let the uh, script kick in and, uh, and reboot the virtual machine. All right. You can see now after the reboot that uh, we've logged back in, uh, same user, and the settings and the applications are no longer there. And this is exactly what we would expect. All right. There you go. In conclusion, I've showed you today how to create a pooled desktop collection along with non-persistent disks. My name is Jason. I'm here at Panologic. Feel free to contact us, help.panologic.com or support at panologic.com. Thank you.